Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome again to another painting tutorial. Today I'll be painting a landscape and we'll be doing some reflections on the water, reflecting the sky. And I'm just so excited about this one because I just love landscapes. Again, landscapes are my go-to whenever I, I feel like I don't have anything to paint, but I just want to paint. It's, you know, days like that happen. All right, so the colors that I'll be mentioning today for, during the introduction of this video will be listed in the description box below as always. And today I'll be using quite a bunch of colors. Okay, so we have titanium white, cerulean blue. We'll have to show you. All right, so we have titanium white, okay, cerulean blue, cadmium yellow, black, orange permanent green deep you can also use stalo green um what is this uh yellow ochre violet and burnt sienna or in my case i'm using brown red so let's begin now i'm gonna sketch first where things are gonna go so that you have an idea of how things will look like uh at the end or the result so that you will have an idea of how this is going to end. So I'm going to use first uh, my blue. I'm going to use my cerulean blue. Let's just first define where things, where the horizon is going to go. So I'm just going to be um, like uh, two thirds of the canvas. I'm using a 14 by 11 or 11 by 14 canvas board, a canvas paper. Okay, just like that. So this is where my horizon is gonna go. And if I think that it's a little bit crooked, I'm just gonna adjust it later. But for now, I think it's fine. And now let's proceed to identifying where things are gonna go down here on the foreground. And still, I'm gonna use my blue because we'll be using a lot of greens. So if I use blue, it's all right because green is a combination of blue and yellow. So it will be perspective play, okay? We'll be doing some sort of perspective today. And you know how much I love doing perspective paintings because um, it makes the painting look more 3D, okay? When in fact, it's just, you know, 2D. Kind of like that. So there will be a stream. Not really a stream, but a, you call it. A small, um, it's a very narrow um, river, okay? All right, just like that. So this will be the water portion and this will be the grass or the fields portion. Okay, just like that. Okay, so this is where things are going to go. It's going to be very, very simple. But since it's simple, we're going to do our best to look it more natural, to make it look more realistic, because that's always my style. All right, so I'm going to underpaint first the sky. Or let's, okay, hello. Hello, silence. Come on. It's Saturday, so... <laughs> I didn't expect that it will be really noisy at this time of the hour, at this time of the day. I'm going to get my cerulean blue. Okay, I'm going to dab on a little bit of black, mix it with my cerulean blue and white, just to tone down the blueness of the cerulean blue color. And I'm going to start creating the sky. Let's make the sky more muted. Okay, we don't want the sky to be super bright. Um, we'll be doing a more of a, an afternoon scene. It's not super sunset scene, but more of afternoon. Like maybe um, 3.30 in the afternoon, <laughs> very specific. Okay. Again, a combination of cerulean blue, black, and white, just to get that toned blue color for the sky. Okay. 
All right. Now I'm going to get my violet. I'm going to mix that with the blue color that we already have. Mix it with a little bit of black so that it's more toned down and a little bit of white to make it more on the pastel side of things. And I'm going to use this violet -y color. Okay, just around this area. And you know me, I just use my fingers to spread the paint. I am such a, I'm a, a, fing, a finger painter. <laughs> and no shade. Okay, just gonna spread a little bit of that violet color. Okay, I'm gonna switch brush, okay? I'm going to add some white and yellow right here. Okay. Again, we want to smoothen the lines because um, while this is preliminary, you know, what I'm doing is very preliminary to the final look of the sky. We want to make sure that we make soft lines. All right, I'm going to get some white and I'm going to apply it. Okay. Right here. Okay, I'm going to gray the white. We don't want to use pure white just yet. So I'm going to gray down the white by adding black to that. And I'm going to make some streaks of clouds. I cannot believe how noisy it is today outside. I wasn't painting earlier and it was quiet and now that I'm painting all the noise I would notice I, I never get used to it um, I don't think I will ever get used to noisy things or noisy places I will I don't think so it's, it's quite it's quite annoying <laughs> of course I mean, look at it it's noisy again. I'm so sorry, guys. Even I myself is um, not very pleased about the noise. Anyway, uh, they say if you can't beat them, join them. So I'm going to make my own noise. <laughs> I'm just going to do my own thing here. Okay, and yeah, I'm just telling you because uh, I know that not many people can actually appreciate uh, loud noises. <laughs> I don't think there are people who can actually appreciate that. I'm going to get my yellow ochre and I'm going to spread that yellow ochre color right here, okay, very near the horizon line that we just had. And randomly, I'm going to spread that yellow ochre. Right. Oh my God. I cannot believe that this is happening this moment. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Okay, I'm going to spread more yellowy colors. All right, just like that. All right, I'm going to wash my brush out. I'm going to get my cerulean blue. Again, I'm going to darken that cerulean blue. Now I'm really speaking so loud because um, 
Uh, I don't want them to overpower my voice. I want you to hear my voice, not the noise outside. Okay. I'm going to use my cerulean blue plus black. Okay. I'm just going to relayer the sky portion. Okay. I'm going to add more black to that. Because I can still see some areas that are not well covered. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to get my white. And I'm just going to lighten this portion of the horizon line. Okay, now I'm going to get my purple again. Get your purple, add some black, and I want to create, okay, let's make it dark. Let's create some darker version of the purple clouds. Again, you want to soften it, make sure that you somehow soften the colors. Okay. All right, just like that. Okay, I'm going to get another brush. I'm going to dab onto my white. I'm just going to make sure that this part of the sky is brighter, the center most portion. And I'm going to continue doing some streaks of clouds. And just like that. Okay. I'm going to get my violet plus white and I just want to make sure that there is okay, and blue probably. Okay, just like that. Okay, great. I will go. I will go back to the sky, sky later. But for now, let's leave it like that. We're just uh, in the preliminary stage of the painting process. So I'm gonna wash my brush out. You don't have to wash it so well. Just remove the the paints. Okay. Now I'm gonna get my black. Mix it with green, okay, and I'm going to cover. Let's underpaint first this part of the painting. This is the underpainting for that. So it's a combination mm -hmm. of black and green. All right, and then 
Just cover it with this color. No particular brush strokes required. Just cover it, you know, for purposes of underpainting, giving it some dark, to dark tones, shadows, and of course, depth. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing right on the left side. So just cover this area with some green, dark green color. All right, cover it with green, dark green color. Okay, I'm going to wet it a bit so that the paint um really really sticks on my canvas okay just darken the portion mm -hmm. Just like that. Yeah, you can definitely go and paint over the sketch lines that we had. Remember that I used blue here for the sketch lines. So you can definitely paint over that area so that um, we don't see any blue line anymore. Okay. Just like that. And now we will be adding more um, distant trees in the background or distant mountains or rocks or it could be anything, but there should be objects from the distance. And I'll be using this color on my paintbrush. I'm just going to add a little bit of white so that I tone it down or give it a more uh, light, lighter look. Uh, I mean, give it more light look. So I'm going to add black. So I'm just going to gray it down. I'm going to add some burnt sienna or brown red, green and black. So just combine everything on your palette as long as it's there's some sort of white color. And okay, maybe I'm going to add a little more white just to lighten things up a bit because these are distant trees. And make sure that you only use... You only use the tip of the the brush, the bristles, so that um, you can use another brush if you think that. Uh, you cannot control a wider, a wider tip brush. You see, I'm just making some markings. I'm not really trying to paint anything. I'm just making some markings right here. Okay, just like that. All right, okay, I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm going to use a smaller, more pointy brush. I'm going to get my black and I'm just going to go again and re-outline this area because I went outside that line when I was doing the distant trees. Okay, just like that. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'll be adding more white. Okay, and maybe a little bit of blue. We're going to create more distant, um, distant, distant markings um, right here in the background. Just to suggest that there are all there are other things you know going on from the distance.
Okay, so I got. Now I'm gonna get my pure black, and we wanna make sure that we still make some dark markings on this distant trees and mountains to create um, depth and negative spaces between, you know, between those things that are far. Create some shadows, or oh, here we go again with the noise. But I think noise are my friends. Noises are my friends now. I don't want to hate noises anymore because I think the more you hate things, the more, the more they, you know, the more they irritate you. But if you start loving, appreciating the noise, the more it doesn't irritate you anymore. Okay? <laughs> Is that a good idea? I'm going to get my black again. I'm just going to make some outline right on the most distant mountains that we just created. Okay. But we want to make sure that it's a subtle outline and we don't want to use too much of the dark colors because they are far. Okay. Right. Okay, just like that. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to doing some grasses. And I think this is the fun, the fun bit about this painting, simply because, you know, I love painting um, landscapes. And we'll be using our, um, what do you call this, fan brush. So I'll be getting my fan brush. Let me show you the fan brush that I'll be using. It's more on the step side of things so i'll be using this fan brush as you can see here the, the bristles are more stiff okay compared to my other fan brush which is softer and i don't want to use this soft brush i'm going to use the stiff brush so that it creates that grass-like patterns that i want for this painting so i'm going to use this dry and i'm going to dab onto my green and yellow i'm gonna mix black green and yellow and i'm gonna start creating okay um grasses all right okay, i'm gonna make some more black color we don't want this to be super yellow green the grasses are not really really tall okay but they are they're like cut, they're like trimmed grasses. So I'm gonna move my fan brush in this manner to suggest short um, grasses. Okay, just like this. So just move your fan brush the way I'm doing it and you can actually get some more black. Just to, actually I, I grab on, I grab onto my yellow color. So I'm just going to create, just enjoy this process. This is very fun and easy. Um, it's just about controlling your hands. Again, just short dabs, but vertical, so that you follow the movement or the natural uh, shape of the grass. Of grasses I mean I'm gonna get my green okay so just pure phthalo green or permanent green in the same manner I'm just gonna do okay why is my green not working my green is too transparent I guess yeah I'm allowing some yellow to be there it's fine now I'm gonna get my burnt sienna and I want to make sure that some brownie colors are here on my um, landscapes. Landscape.
Okay, just like this. Now I'm going to add white to my green color. Okay, and I'm going to add black to that. Okay, remember to always add white so that becomes more visible. And again, I'm going to do the same manner. I'm going to do the brush strokes in the same manner. Alright. I think I'll be using my palette, my palette knife later, just to create more texture. And randomly, I'm just gonna add patterns like this. We're not suggesting long grasses here, but we want to suggest an evenness. Okay. I'm gonna dab onto my burnt sienna. Okay, just like that. All right, I'm gonna dive onto my black. Now we want we don't want to forget some um, negative spaces. You don't want to forget that because it will make your painting more dimensional. All right, I'm going to switch brush. I'm going to use um, like an old brush. I'll be using this brush, okay? I'll be using a very old pointy brush. And I'm going to use the same color, greens and yellows. I'm going to add more blue, okay? I'm going to add a little bit of cerulean blue going on. I'm going to spread it like this. As you can see here, I'm just making some markings. I'm not really painting grasses, but I'm painting the appearance of grasses. I'm going to get my black. Let's create some sort of um, indentations. All right, and I'm gonna use this black to go around this area. All right, just like that. And some burnt sienna. You know, ever since the weather has gone a little bit warmer for the past um, week, I think the streets have become noisier. Uh, that's what I noticed. And I think everybody will agree. <laughs> I'm going to add some brownie colored stuff here to make it appear more natural. I'm sorry, guys. Am I the only one who, who hates noise? I just don't like it. I don't know why. I just, uh, noise is for me, it's a, it's a toxic thing to have, to have around. I'm going to get my black. But of course, I mean, I cannot absolutely avoid that unless I put myself in isolation. But <laughs> what I'm saying is that some people um, are very inconsiderate when it comes to creating uh, very distracting noises. And um, we cannot really prevent ourselves from encountering them. We're not excused. I mean, who are we? Um, I'm just saying that as an artist, I don't think I will ever, ever appreciate noise. 
as a form of meditating um, thing for me. Anyway, I'm just sharing with you how I feel about the noise. I'm going to add more greeny colors right here. And I know some people will suggest, why don't you just vacuum the house? Meaning uh, when you vacuum the house or, you know, enclose your room in a vacuum uh, way, meaning the noise will not come and the noise will not go from the inside. Uh, well, I wouldn't do that. But I know that suggestion. Okay, just letting you know. All right. Okay, some more light colors, light colors over here. And I'm adding a little bit of brownie colors. Okay. Okay, and let's do the same thing right here on the uh, left side. So what we did here was we use our, pa our fan brush. Okay. I'll be getting my black and green, a little bit of yellow, and blue. I'm going to add blue right away. and white just to start lightening everything now i'm gonna lighten again move in a vertical direction you can go a little bit diagonal but remember that it should be always going down not going side to side if that makes sense okay i'm gonna dab on to my brownie color you want to make sure that there are some brown colors going on here. So just enjoy this process. I mean, I'm not even exerting a lot of effort for doing the grass. Just do it this way. And remember to go over the sketch line so that your grasses look more natural and not, you know, really, really structured. Again, you can go a little bit diagonal, but make sure that it's still towards you, okay? When you pull, when you pull your brush, it's, it should be towards you, not from left to right or like right to left. All right. Now I'm going to get my brown color and I'm going to dab onto my white. So by lightening my brownie color, I'm, I'll be creating some dead grass, okay? But it has to be there. I mean... It has to be there. Let's make this painting look more natural. I realized that I really missed watching Vincent Van Gogh and going to his exhibitions. I just miss Vincent Van Gogh. I mean, the Art Institute of Chicago has a lot of, um, well, not too much, but beautiful paintings of Vincent van Gogh. You know, I call them beautiful, even if we have different styles, simply because his paintings are about his life, you know. And I really like that, that fact, that it's about him. That makes the painting more beautiful. All right. I'm going to dab onto my white without washing my brush. And I'll be creating highlighted um, grasses here. Some highlighted grasses. All right, just like this. I'm going to highlight a little bit of the distant grasses and also right here. 
Okay, now don't forget the negative spaces. For the negative spaces, I can use any brush because I'll be using black. But um, I'm just going to use the pen brush that I used. So I'm going to get my black. And I'm going to remove the excess water. That's too much water. And I'm going to go and create some negative spacing. And we want to make sure that there are negative spaces. Because without this, it will make your painting look really flat and cartoonish. And while cartoons are not really bad, that's not the goal here. All right, okay. So I'm gonna use some more pointy brush again. I'm just gonna go along the left side, I'm gonna dab onto my black, and I'm just gonna make some outline. Okay, I'm, I'm trying also to remove the blue line that I just did earlier during the sketch process. Okay. Okay, just like that. And I'm just going to use the remaining paints to create some more um, negative spaces. Okay, now I'm going to use my black. And I want to create some like bushes, bushes, sorry. Also right here, just use black first, okay? These are some bushes that are going on, um, these fields. I'm going to allow those first to dry. And I'm going to re-outline the horizon line. I'm going to use black to just re-outline it properly. Just go along the horizon line again. All right, just like that. Again, we were going to go back. We're going to go back to some areas, okay? Let's just allow the paint to dry. Let's move on to the center most part of the painting, which will be waters. However, there will be reflections of what's above here. Okay. So before we proceed to, um, to doing the reflections, I'm going to use a clean brush. I'm going to dab onto my white, and I'm going to water down my white. And I just want to go and glaze. Okay, I'm going to glaze the sky part so that it appears more soft and appears more light. Okay. I want to soften it like this. By just glazing it, you're not really painting over it, but you are... It's like varnishing it with some white. I call it varnishing. Okay. I'm going to apply a little bit of that white on the distant trees and mountains appearing here. Just to make it more distant. To make it appear more far from you. All right. Just like that. And then I'm going to get some violet. 
sorry, not violet. I'm going to get some cerulean blue. Okay. You know my, I'm going to get um, some more cerulean blue. You know, my canvas paper is really absorbent. That's why um, it's... My paints sink, sip through the, the canvas paper that I'm using. So if your canvas paper or canvas board, your material that you're painting on is similar to mine, very absorbent, you can um, always relayer anytime. However, I suggest that before you relayer, okay, you wait for the previous paint to dry, okay, so that you don't smudge the colors. I'll be getting my violet. Oops, that's too much. I'll be applying some violet colors right here. And right, just like that. Now I'm going to get my yellow ochre, plus white. Again, yellow ochre plus white, and I'm just going to use this to make this area more light. Just like this. Okay, now that we're at it already, I'm going to use this yellow ochre right here. Okay, it's really watery. Okay, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to use another brush. I'm going to dab onto my white, the cerulean blue. But remember to add a little bit of black to your cerulean blue and white so that it's more on the neutral, neutral side of things. I'm going to soften it. Oh, sorry. I'm going to add more white right here just to soften things a bit. And then I'm going to add blue and violet and, of course, white. Don't forget, and black, always use black to just mute the colors down, okay? And I'm going to use that color down here.
Uh, we will correct anything that appears weird. Okay. For now, let's just do this. Just like that. And using white. Okay, don't forget white. We want to soften, okay? I'm going to go a little bit vertical. Oh, sorry. Horizontal when it comes to my brush strokes. Okay, just like that, soften it. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Let me see. That's nice. Let me just move. All right, I'm going to get my white. I'm going to go a little bit vertical this time. Just remember that we're doing reflections, so there is some sort of vertical brush strokes that you should see. Okay. Just like that. Okay, great. I'm gonna get my violet. I'm gonna create some little markings here so that it really looks natural, you know. So just tiny things that I know that we can do away with, however, um, I want it to be there. Okay, just like that. Maybe I'm going to use another brush. I'm going to get more white. And I'm going to start, you know, highlighting the farthest most, uh, far, <laughs> the far most, um, area right here. I'm gonna widen it a bit so that it appear it appears more bright. I'm gonna get my yellow. I'm gonna water it down and apply a little bit of yellowy colors. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pull it down so that it's more part of the reflections. Okay, great. And using this yellow, I'm just going to go and apply some yellowy colors. Okay. Just to give it more light. Okay. All right. And I'm just using my fingers to dab the colors onto this area all right just like that and we really like this one okay and then i'm gonna use my pure white i'm gonna create some more um white brush uh, brush strokes right here.
And using this white, I'm going to go around, okay? That line, you okay, just follow, just spin along the curvatures, okay? Using white. This is just to highlight it. Let's go around it to suggest some light. Great. And then again, I'll be using more white to make this area appear more bright. In the same manner, I'm just going to go a little bit vertical and pull down just like that. Okay. All right, now using my black, let's go here and create some shadow. Okay, just like that. Okay. And then using some violet colors mixed with white. I did not wash my brush. Okay. And let's create some of that violet colors. Very subtle. Right, just like that. Now, let's create some more highlights. I'm going to get my burnt sienna and white. Okay, that's too brown. I'm going to get more white. Let's create some more browny colored colors. light brown colors okay again you should go like beyond you should make the grass overlap okay? overlap the land portion so that it looks more natural just like that Okay, I'm going to get some green, yellow ochre. All right, and then using some greeny colors, let's highlight already this little bush. And also right here. So just tiny bushes. Okay. Right, just like that. 
and some dark greens. Okay, I told you earlier that I'll be using a palette knife, and we will, okay? I'm going to get some green, black, and white so that we highlight a little bit of this bush. And just tap, tap, tap. Right. Some brownie things. All right, just like that. Now I'm going to use some watered down white. Let's go back to the water part. Okay, I'm going to use again my white. Make sure that it's watered down. Okay. And I'm just going to go and make a quick um, go this. Glazing it with that color. Follow the, the shape of it. That's why I'm using a lot of water here, is to actually, you know, imitate the waters. Mm -hmm. And then I can go a little bit like this. Let's see. And I'm going to go over it again with some dry brush. Just like that. Some white highlight. Some white highlights, okay? just to make your land part look more realistic. I'm going to apply a little bit of brownie colors. Just like that. Okay, we haven't really applied a little bit of orange, so I'm going to get a little bit of orange. Okay. And of course, we're doing the sky. I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to get my orange. Since orange is more on the translucent side of things, um, it's very easy for us to glaze using, that, using this color. So I'm just going to use a little bit of orange. Mm -hmm. And you cannot miss applying that color on the waters.
Right. Great. Using some more yellowy colors. You know, the sky is a huge part of this painting. It plays a huge role in setting the moon. Okay, now let's proceed to using my palette knife. So I'll be using this palette knife and I'm just going to drag the same colors that we already have on our palette. Okay, going to get some greeny color. Plus black and white and I think I already ran out of green. Okay, anyway, if I ran out of green, I can simply mix blue and yellow. Okay. Now that we have our olive green, I'll be using olive green. I'm just going to drag it. Just like this. To create patterns and even markings. Okay. Just like that. And using again some greens. We want to make sure that the negative spaces we don't miss. Okay. So I'm just using dark greens to fill in those. Um, spaces with some negative negative spaces okay and i think okay i need more black Let's just go back to this area because I I highlighted here so much that I remove the the shadow. And let's create some unevenness. Let's see, this is nice. I'm going to get my white and 
I'm going to create some more white effects. Some green colors are mixing, but I really don't mind. It's okay. I mean, it only will make our painting more natural. Dark colors. Um, cerulean blue. It's really nice. So I'm just going to make some more highlights. We want to make sure that they look more browny. Okay. All right, more greens and of course more browns so i'm just playing with browns and greens and yellows i just want to make sure that it looks more natural than just pure green or pure yellow i'm just using black Right, just like that. Okay, this is nice. I'm just gonna make some slight outline along the distant mountains.
and we want to make sure that the distant areas are highlighted. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is nice. Right. Okay. So I think we're done. Okay. So I just added a little more long, like long grasses on the left side. And I think I really like this one. So I'm going to sign this now. Okay. I'll be using my white. I'm going to sign right here. And we're finished so i hope you enjoy that one guys and i'm gonna link in the description box below my landscape painting tutorial so that you can select from among them which one you want or you can simply paint along with me you know uh, by watching multiple painting painting tutorials of mine so see you in my next one and i hope you have a great weekend bye guys mm -hmm.